Yo, what's up gamers? This week we are diving into the biggest updates in the gaming world. We made adjustment to the weekly news video to cover games from multiple genres. So share me your thoughts about this change in the comment section down below and subscribe to help this small YouTube channel to grow up. This week we got new games releasing, updates from many knowing games like Throne and Liberty, Ashes of Creation, Resident Evil, Project L and many other games as well as beta test for other games. So, let's get in the video. Starting this video with Throne of Liberty. Last time we talked about Throne of Liberty, we saw the new customization system, which was really amazing. The best thing I liked so far about this customization system is the using of AI. So basically you can upload your picture and you can use your own picture to create your own avatar, which was really amazing. This is better than any customization system I've seen in any MMO game. And yesterday we got some information about the system requirements for the game. If you look at the minimum requirement, nothing looks crazy. I mean, Quarry 5, 6,500, 8 gigabytes of RAM, maybe this is a little bit higher than what we've seen in other games, but I would say it's fine. The graphic card, 1060, I mean, nothing looks crazy in this minimum system requirement if we consider that Throne and Liberty will have one of the highest graphics I've seen in any MMO before. Now, the recommended requirements is i5 9500 16 gigabytes of ram graphic card 1660 i mean nothing crazy about the game maybe it need a little bit more rams than we seen in, in other games but as i said nothing looks crazy in the system requirements for the game if we consider the high graphics that the game have and finally we have some informations from korean player who participate in the alpha test. He got asked so many questions and here is the most important one. First, they said that melee classes are not recommended due to the combat system. Are there any advantages for mages and archers? The player said that he only play mages, so he's not sure how it feels when you play melee. He said also arenas still unknown, and the system optimization for the game is excellent. You can play the game on PC with minimal requirement without any issues, but we still have to wait and see how it will perform when we have multiple players in the same zone. He gave also positive feedback about the game store. So if you are interested in Throne of Liberty and you want me to make specific video for it, let me know in the comment section down below. Wuthering Wave, which incredible action RPG gacha game, will have the final beta in April 24. The registration for the closed beta is still open, so don't miss that chance. They also giving some good rewards in Twitter like iPhone 14 Pro Max, some merchandise and CBT which close beta test qualification for 20 winners. So check it out. Hoyoverse, the company behind Genshin Impact is releasing a new turn-based game called Honkai Star Reels. Honkai Star Real got the highest pre-registration number I have ever seen in any gacha game before, which as you can see here nearly 9 million. The game will be available on the same platform as we seen in Genshin Impact, which mobile phone, uh, consoles and PC as well. And for those who pre-register on the game, they will get some amazing rewards as we can see. The game will be releasing globally on April 26. Ion Classic is set to be releasing to the European servers in April 12, but Gameforge delayed this date for the second time. After encountering some technical issues, they pushed the release date to April 25. Project L is a new fighting game developed by Riot Games. And they said the game is still in early stages, so we don't expect to see the game before 2024. And one of the pro players that got invited to try the game gave us some information. The game will be 2 vs 2, which means each player will have two champions to play with. The game will be free to play and available on all regions. The champions in this game will be from League of Legends, but I don't think they will add all League of Legends champions to this game, at least not in the first launch. One Piece Odyssey getting a new DLC titled Reunion of Memories. In this new story, Luffy and his friends will be teleported to Arabasta and we will see some interesting characters like Crocodile. The release date for this DLC is not announced yet, but we expect to see it soon. Blue Protocol closed beta in Japan ended the last week. 
and Bandai Namco posted video for Blue Protocol anime opening. Does that mean that Blue Protocol will get an anime? I don't know, but that's become very possible. In March 24, we seen the release for Resident Evil 4. And two days ago, they add Mercenaries a new DLC. This DLC mode will be free and anyone can download it. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is set to be released in April 28. The game will be available on PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X. The game director Stig Asmosin, I don't think I spell his name right, says the next generation features such as real-time ray tracing is allowing to respawn to work at fidelity that's well beyond anything we have ever produced before. It's around 3 weeks left for the game release, so we would like to see that in action. And finally, in the last week, the developers of Ashes of Creation made the live stream of 1 hour and a half long. In this live stream, they shows their progress in the game. We've seen early look at their dynamic story arc system and lore of Carfin and more things. One thing that got my attention that the graphic in this game is below the expectation. I don't mean it's bad, but if we compare it with something like Throne and Liberty, it's far behind. It's far behind. That was the biggest gaming news in this week. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel. We don't have many subscribers as you can see, so I appreciate every single subscribe. And share me your opinion in the comment section down below. If you like the video, share it with your friends and hopefully see you in the next week.